Krishna, everyone. Uh, welcome back again to our ongoing discussions about our most beloved Sri Vindavan Dham and um, our beloved Acharyas who um, have many pastimes in that transcendental abode. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pachachadeshatarani. All glories to Sridhar Prabhupada. <coughs> so today we will continue with our uh, discussion on one of our greatest saints and dearest, dear most heroes, uh, Srila Naratam Das Thakur, part two. <coughs> As we mentioned before, um, Naratam Das Thakur appeared to help uh, propagate the Sankirtan movement after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's departure from this world. And although the teachings uh, expounded by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through his direct disciples, the uh, six Goswamis of Vrindavan, are very deep and very philosophical, you could say even impenetrable by many Vedic scholars. By Naratam's expertise, he made uh, such knowledge, such wisdom, easily understandable and applicable to uh, common men and women through his uh, simple poetry and, and songs. In fact, Naratam Dastakur's literary works <coughs> comprise of only two books of songs, Prartana and Prem Bhakti Chandrika, which um, spell out in simple language the essence of devotional service in practice and perfection. <coughs> the great saint um, Gorkhashore Das Babaji was once asked, um, how can one attain love of God? And he replied, oh, it only costs five anas. At that time, his, his audience couldn't understand what he meant, <laughs> so he elaborated. He said, quote, go to the market and purchase Naratam Dasta Kors Pratana and Prem Bhakti Chandraka for five anas. If you read and meditate on these books daily, you will surely develop love for Krishna. Unquote. And an example of Naratam Dasta Kors simple uh, Bengali poetry uh, is this um, stanza from um, his Partana. <coughs> Actually, I always, I often quote a part of it. Golok Prem Dan, Harinam Shan Kirtan, Rati Na Jamilo Kenatai, Shamshara Bishanale, Dishanashi Hiadwale, Jurite Na Koinu Upai. Quote The treasure of divine love in Goloka Vindavan has descended as the congregational chanting of the holy names of Hari. Why did my attraction for that chanting never come about? Day and night my heart burns in the fire of the poison of worldliness, and I have not taken the means to relieve it." Unquote. Very simple language, simple Bengali, simple language, but very deep import, which um, regular people, normal people, like well, the people of Kali Yuga, they can easily understand. And the process is so simple. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, to reach perfection. <coughs> um, Srila Narahari Chakravarti describes this compassionate nature of Naratam Das Thakur in uh, making the topmost goal of life, pure devotion to Radha and Krishna, easily available to all. Um, in his uh, Bhakti Ratnakara, <coughs> 14th wave, he writes about this compassionate nature of Naratam Das Thakur. Quote, noble-hearted Naratam was very dear to Lord Gora's devotees. With his words, he rendered great service to the Vaishnavas. How wonderful was his mercy. 
To whom would he not give in charity the precious Chintamani jewel of pure bhakti? He even made demons and blasphemers uh, become intoxicated by tasting the nectar of Lord Gora's glories. He was always overcome with the ecstasy of spiritual love. His extraordinary activities were beyond the influence of this material world. There was no one like him. In country after country, his fame will be spread. And it's true. Those of us from America and France and Germany and Russia and Ukraine and Australia and Brazil and Ecuador, by Shri Prabhupada's cause us mercy. We have access to this great personality, Srila Naratam Das Thakur. And we have his books, Pratana and Prem Bhakti Chandrika. They're on my shelf and their pages are getting worn away through the years. <laughs> Such an inspiration. <coughs> of course, it's a very deep subject matter, Krishna consciousness, especially as it is presented by our illustrious six Goswamis in Vrindavan. It's very deep could say esoteric. And um, for that reason, also um, Naratam Das Thakur's um, presentation of Krishna consciousness is relishable. It's relishable, it's appreciated by the connoisseurs of loving devotion to the divine couple. We read it in one way, they read it in another way due to their purity and their transcendental vision. And this is uh, stated so beautifully in Banas uh, Kandambari, Mangala Charana, verse number seven. He writes, this is explaining how um, ordinary people may have difficulty sometimes understanding uh, Vedic knowledge, but for the connoisseurs, uh, the, the rasic devotees, it goes straight to their heart, their hearts. He writes, quote, <coughs> fine literature is not appreciated by a wicked mortal. Much like nectar does not go down Rahu's throat. Whereas such literature is treasured in the heart of a good soul, like Hadi's chest bears the splendid Kashtuba jewel. I'm going to recite that again. Fine literature is not appreciated by a wicked mortal. Much like nectar does not go down Rahu's throat. Whereas such literature is treasured in the heart of a good soul, like Hari's chest bears the splendid Kashtuba jewel. Hare Krishna. <coughs> so our last lecture concluded with um, Naratam's visit to uh, Jagannath Puri, where you remember Lord Chaitanya appeared to him during the Rathiyatra, and after embracing him, predicted his success and spreading the holy names of Krishna everywhere. <coughs> After this Naratam, um, <coughs> he returned to his home in Keturi, where I was reading, uh, I was reading in, um, where was I reading that? Oh, Bhakti Ratnakara, where he was again received as a hero by the people of that most fortunate town. And when Naratam arrived at his residence, a letter was awaiting him. And it was from his Dikshu Guru, uh, Lokanath Goswami. And in the letter, Lokanath asked him to establish deity worship in Keturi Gram by installing um, five deities of Krishna and one deity of Lord Chaitanya. These were his instructions. Now, Lokanath Goswami wanted to establish the importance of deity worship in the uh, rapidly expanding cult of Lord Chaitanya's movement. It was spreading very quickly because it's so easy and so sublime. You chant, you dance, you hear some kata, you take Krishna prasadam. So the movement was spreading like wildfire, not only around Vrindavan, but also in Orissa and also in, uh, in, in Bengal. So Lokanath Goswami felt that it was important to uh, establish the, the worship of the Krishna deity and eventually Radha and Krishna, and of course, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gorni Thai, like that. So he wrote to Narottam, <coughs> you please establish these deities in Keturi. Now it's interesting that um, 
Naratam Das Thakur, he chose the day of Gaur Purnima, the auspicious birth anniversary of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to um, have that installation. It was the year 1583. So he chose that day. It was a, you could say, a landmark event that helped define Gaudiya Vaishnavism in many ways. Lord Chaitanya had departed several decades earlier, I'd say almost 50 years, really. But his birth anniversary had, had not been observed as a, as a major celebration in the general devotee community. One reason is that devotees were still so devastated that, he, that he'd left, and Nitai had left, Panchatattva had left, so many great devotees had left. Devotees were just devastated. I was reading it, they could hardly pick up a Murdunga and Kartals and start chanting the names of, of Gorni Thai. They just start crying and fall down unconscious. <laughs> so this um, first Gaur Purnima festival, Naratam envisioned it as a way to revive the Sankirtan movement by reviving all the devotees. And he also saw the event as an opportunity to um, share the teachings of the six Goswamis throughout Bengal, Arisa, and other places as well. Um, amongst, you know, the, whoever was left in the first generation and the second generation, the associates of Mahaprabhu and their followers. So he um, organized invitations to be sent out. And, and I was reading that the invitations were, were um, written in very elaborate Sanskrit poetry. <laughs> and they were sent everywhere to, to everyone. And it, 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 the whole organization of, of this event, it was a, a huge event. It proved to be a very expensive affair, actually. <clears throat> and um, why? Well, because so many devotees were, co were, were, were invited to come, and because Naratan, being the first-class devotee was, wanted to receive and accommodate all the devotees who would attend with excellent facilities. And he was able to do that because recently his father, Krishna Nanda, the king, and his uncle, uh, Purushottam, had both passed away, leaving behind a lot of riches. It was a wealthy, wealthy kingdom. And they um, entrusted in their will uh, this wealth to Santosh Datta, who was um, Naratam's very close cousin. And it's interesting because Santosh had recently become Naratam's disciple. <laughs> and he was anxious to meet all the saints that Naratam w was inviting to come to the event. So really, <clears throat> Santosh became the main organizer of the festival. And he spent, I think I read, most of the wealth left behind him. And he worked tirelessly for months preparing for the event. And he had a, um, a huge and very ornate uh, temple constructed, as well as a, um, a large uh, storehouse for, f for food. <coughs> he also had a, a, a elaborately designed kirtan hall. You see that um, now in India, you see like in Gaudiya Math, for example, they'll have the, the temple, then they'll have a kirtan hall separate. In, in Iskon, be, because of the way the movement spread in the West, we have, you know, the Kirtan Hall is the temple room, but it appears the tradition originally was you had the temple, and then you had a big Kirtan Hall. So he had a temple constructed, a large storehouse for food, and uh, a very big, beautiful Kirtan Hall. And um, <coughs> adjoining uh, residential buildings for devotees. He also constructed a big bathing pond, and um, he had a very colorful and uh, uh, large, beautiful uh, flower garden built to serve the deities, and also so devotees could come and, and take walks in this, in this beautiful park. <laughs> so again, messages or invitations were sent everywhere, and n not only inviting Vaishnavas, I was reading that the, the invitations went out to kings, to queens, 
to the royal families, to the ministers, went out to, uh, to, to big landowners, went out to poets, scholars, authors, performers, ar performers, artists, and many illustrious guests. It was a big, big, big affair. And while uh, Santosh was busy preparing for this festival, <coughs> Naratam was busy having five deities of Krishna carved, and he personally oversaw the carving of these five um, deities of Krishna, as instructed by his Guru Maharaj. And the carving went well. He was pleased how each of the five deities came out. But he wasn't happy with the um, sculptor's attempts to carve the Goranga deity. Each time they presented him with a, a newly carved deity of Lord Chaitanya, he rejected it. Because he, th he felt it didn't actually resemble the, um, how Mahaprabhu uh, appeared or how he heard he appear, because of course he didn't get to see him. But when he was young, remember he was hearing daily from uh, that Brahmana Krishna Das when he was a young boy growing up in the palace. He heard everything about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His pastimes as Nimai Pandit, and then as a household or a sannyasi traveling. So he had a, a good idea what Mahaprabhu looked like. <coughs> but the, um, the artists weren't, were not able to portray that properly. Neither did they, um, was the ambience of the deity there, the, uh, you could say the mood of Lord Chaitanya. What was the mood of Mahaprabhu? So many verses describing Mahaprabhu's mood. Uh, last night, before taking rest, I read one. Um, in Chaitanya Chandamrita, verse 12. Of course, Chaitanya Chandamrita is written by our illustrious Prabodhananda Saraswati, who we lectured about um, a week or two ago. <coughs> so he, <coughs> in this verse, verse 12, he gives a very beautiful description of the mood of, of, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we should think of these moods when we're um, envisioning him or, for example, when we come before the deity of Lord Chaitanya or, or Gornitai deities. We shouldn't just look at the form, but we should, we, should, we should also remember the mood of Mahaprabhu. And this is what brings forth emotion, spiritual emotion from the heart. So here's a beautiful description of Mahaprabhu's mood. Prabhupada Saraswati says, Aho, aho means I say, to he from whose eyes rain tears, giving the impression that myriad monsoon-laden clouds have been trapped in them, whose unlimited treasure of love overshadows all, rendering billions of Vaikunthas as farcical comities. The enchanting beauty and lustrous charm of his transcendental body agitates the waves of billions of oceans of nectar. To Sri Gaurahari, who has disguised himself as a sannyasi, I offer my homage. Shall we recite that again? Yes, we will. <coughs> oh, I say, to he, meaning Mahaprabhu, from whose eyes rain tears, giving the impression that the myriad monsoon-laden clouds have been trapped in them, whose unlimited treasure of love overshadows all, rendering billions of Vaikunthas as farcical comedies. The enchanting beauty and lustrous charm of his transcendental body agitates the waves of billions of oceans of nectar. To Sri Gaurahari, who has disguised himself as a sannyasi, I offer my homage. Sri <laughs> Garanga Mahaprabhu Ki. <coughs> so as the day um, of the event was nearing, Narutam was becoming anxious that they wouldn't have a deity of Lord Chaitanya to install, because it just wasn't manifesting according to how, how he envisioned him or how he was. So one night, Lord Chaitanya resolved the issue by appearing in Narutam's dream, let us again say a vision, 
And Mahaprabhu said to him, <coughs> quote, Naratam, I, I have been waiting for you to return to Keturi. I've hidden my deity form in a nearby granary. It is the largest granary in Keturi. Please come now and rescue me, unquote. So when Naratam woke up, he immediately began inquiring uh, in, in amongst the townspeople, you know, where's the largest granary? And in time, people informed him of, of its location, um, but they said it was now abandoned. And they warned him not to go in the granary because it was inhabited by thousands of venomous snakes. But Naratam was not afraid. Raki Krishna Mari Ke, Mari Krishna Raki Ke. Krishna wants to kill you, <laughs> no one can save you. And if Krishna wants to save you, no one can kill you. And besides that, he had the order of Mahaprabhu. And as he came close to that granary, he called out to the snakes. <laughs> he commanded them, all of you snakes must leave now. I'm on a mission for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And as he said that, witnesses <laughs> claim that thousands of snakes came slithering out of the granary and into the forest, never to be seen again. <clears throat> so Naratam entered the granary, and while searching to in, in a large bin of, of, of grains, he found a two-foot-high, solid gold deity of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, weighing five kilos, solid gold. Now that's no exaggeration. Solid gold deity of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. No exaggeration because um, I, had the, I had the good opportunity to uh, have the darshan of that deity on a number of occasions. One time I went alone Another time I went with my godbrother um, Radhana Swami and a small group of um, devotees. Uh, another time I took a, um, a Perkama party there from, from Mayapur. And all of us have seen that beautiful deity, pure gold. Um, he's presently being worshipped in uh, uh, Mushidabad, which is about, I think we drove five hours north of our Mayapur Chandadara Mandir. He's been there since the time of, um, well, just sometime after Naratam Dasakur, he was shifted there. And that's the former uh, residence of Naratam Dasakur's foremost disciple, the illustrious Ganga Narayan Chakravarti. And uh, on one occasion when I was there, the local pujaris, because they so much appreciate what Prabhupada has done, how Prabhupada has taken the um, Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu beyond the borders of Bharat, India, as it was uh, destined to go to practically every town and village of the world now. <laughs> they appreciate Prabhupada, they know, they hear. This news travels very quickly. <laughs> in the material society, bad news travels quickly, but in spiritual cultures, good news travels quickly. So the people of that um, that town in, in um, I could say North Bengal, <coughs> um, where the deity of, of uh, this deity of Goranga is being worshipped, people are very appreciative. So the the um, pujaris, actually the the family that's there and the pujaris, they're descendants of Ganga Narayan Chakravarti. We'll be speaking more about Ganga Narayan Chakravarti probably in part three. <laughs> of the life of Naratam Das Thakur. We won't have time today. But they very kindly allowed me to do um, arti to that Garanga deity. And uh, not only that, but they very kindly bestowed upon me a, um, a Shalagram Shila that Ganga Narayan Chakravarti personally worshipped. There's also his deities there. He has beautiful Radha Krishna. He had beautiful Radha Krishna deities as well. And they're also worshipped there. And I noticed um, the Shalagrams, 
and I said, oh, um, whose shalograms are those? They said, oh, these, these were Ganga Naraya and Chakravarti's shalograms. And before I left, um, the Pajari gave me, I would say the principal um, shalagram Srila, Varaha Narasimha, very beautiful shalagram, wide open mouth and a tusks coming out, so, and chakras, so um, brownish, blackish brown color, Varaha Narasimha. So he's um, part of my daily worship. So now, when Naratam found this deity of <coughs> Mahaprabhu in the granary, he was very satisfied. No more speculation here. <laughs> or rather, let us say that didn't have to depend on the um, on the, uh, the the those who were carving, the, trying to carve the Mahaprabhu deity, because Mahaprabhu had personally manifested himself as he wanted to be worshipped. It's all a gold. <laughs> so. Within time, everything was ready for the festival to begin. And thousands upon thousands upon thousands of devotees began arriving. Just try to envision the scene. It's like the Sankirtan movement, which had been devastated by the departure of the Panchatattva and so many associates. It, it's coming to life again. So those who were Gora Bhaktas, Nitai Bhaktas, <laughs> Who, who want to spread the Sankatan movement, that life's coming back to them. Again, real life. One time, Bhakti Sanana Saraswati Thakur said, those who have life will preach Krishna consciousness. Because this is real life. <laughs> Material life just means serving the dead matter of this body. Well, of course, there's a soul in the body, but the matter is not a life. <laughs> the matter is always dead. It's the soul that moves the body. So material life just means to serve this gross material body. But real life is serving the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So devotees are so enlightened. And um, Bhakti Ratnakara <coughs> gives a, a, a very small, well, it gives a long list of, of those who attended the festival, but I'll give a small sampling of those who attended. The devotees of Jajigaram came together with Srinivasacharya and Govinda Kaviraj. From Narasingapur and Arissa came Shamananda Pandit and his followers, including Rasik Morari, Rasikananda. And um, Janava Mata and a large entourage came from uh, Kardaha. And from Srikanda came Raghunanda Thakur. Uh, Srivas Thakur's brothers came from Navadweep. And Advaitacharya's sons came from Shantipur. Haridai Chaitanya traveled all the way from Ambika Kalna. And I was reading that as, as all these exalt, and there's many more, but time is of essence here. Uh, there's actually pages <laughs> describing who came to the festival, the, the who's who in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And it's described that as all these exalted souls were walking, because that's how you, that was the mode of transportation 500 years ago, um, as they walked from the respective towns, they gathered followers along the way, telling everyone they met, we're going to the Keturi festival. Uh, Naratam Das Thakur, the great saint, is or organizing a festival where s um, six deities will be installed. There'll be massive kirtan, chanting, dancing, lectures by the acharyas, prasadam. <laughs> So people were more pious in those days. So you can imagine, so many people joined them. They just came and, and joined. So the, the ranks swelled and swelled and swelled. And when you, when you um, especially if you're coming from Bengal into East Bengal, you have to cross the, um, the, the Padma River. So Santosh, who was doing all this organization as a, out of a, as a seva to his Guru Maharaj, Narottam Dasakur, he arranged for very large boats. He had large boats built, 
beautiful boats, not just boats, but decorated and painted and artistically done to ferry the devotees across the Padma River. <coughs> and I read that uh, once the devotees arrived on the other side, there were luxurious palanquins and huge ox carts, nicely decorated. And the oxes, their horns were painted and they had coverings over them and they were decorated with jewels <laughs> to carry all these thousands upon thousands of thousands of people to the town of Keturi Gram. And when they arrived in Keturi, Naratam, Srinivas, and Shantosh greeted everyone as they arrived, offering each guest a flower garland and welcoming them with great affection. This is our culture. To receive the Vaishnavas, to um, facilitate the Vaishnavas, and when the event is over, to walk with the uh, Vaishnavas to the end of the property or the town and bid them farewell. Farewell. May, f may you fare well on your journey. Godspeed. <laughs> may God be with you. This is our culture, and really, that's the essence. Uh, this is the, the this es it's the essence of um, loving relationships, and that's the essence of Krishna consciousness: love. Hari Guru Vaishnav, Bhagavata Gita. So all these intricacies we have to maintain in Krishna consciousness. This is our our culture. So um, when when they arrived at where the event was to take place. All the devotees were given separate accommodations. And each devotee had personal servants to tend to their needs. Each devotee. And we're talking about thousands upon thousands. And when the topmost guest of honor arrived, Janava Mata, the wife of the Lord Nityananda, Naratam actually worshipped her with um, flowers and sandalwood paste, etc. And he encouraged all the devotees to do the same. She was the um, senior most respected uh, Vaishnava living at the time. And there's so much glorification of her in Naratam Bilas and um, Bhakti Ratnakara and elsewhere. Just one passage from Bhakti Ratnakara for now describes her, because I think in the next week or two we'll give a lecture on Janava Mata. We must, actually. So Bhakti Ratnakara describes her as follows, <coughs> and I quote, <coughs> She is the wife of Nityananda Balaram, an object of respect and worshipable by all. Her name, Janava Ishvari, is exceedingly sweet Simply by uttering her name, one can be freed from life's worries. Janava Ishwari, Janava Ishwari, Janava Ishwari. <laughs> one can become free from life's worries. She is the beloved of Nityananda, the incarnation of compassion. She voluntarily distributes loving devotion to Krishna to all living beings. Whoever worships her lotus feet and sings her glories will be delivered from the threefold sufferings of material existence." Unquote. <coughs> now before uh, coming to the Keturi festival, um, Lord Chaitanya actually appeared to her in a dream, in a vision. It's described in Bhakti Ratnakara. I read that two days ago. And Mahaprabhu revealed to her that he would make an appearance at the event along with his most intimate associates who had left this world with him. He said to dance, to sing, and to dance in kirtan. Now this, of course, was going to be something very extraordinary because, again, he, he'd left this world several decades earlier. But he told that to Janava Mata. She kept that as a secret, but she knew. <laughs> and Janava Mata's presence at the Keturi festival 
was especially important, the Acharyas say, for within the, you know, our, our Gaudiya Sampradaya, various um, deviant philosophical ideas had arisen. I guess you couldn't say within our Gaudiya Sampradaya, but there were different schisms and there were different personalities saying this and saying that, you know, twisting the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for their own purposes or speculating. It was getting quite bad. Only 50 years after he had left, Mahaprabhu had left. And, um, and um, so throughout the festival, John of Amata in particular, along with Naratam and uh, Srinivasacharya, Shamananda, and uh, other illustrious personalities, um, they would all meet together and they would um, discuss what was the actual doctrine established by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through his um, six Goswamis. So they made it very clear. And uh, they made this, um, they, they uh, met with the devotees in general, you could say like, <coughs> it's the ghosty. And they cleared up all these deviant philosophies and practices, etc. And said, this is the doctrine of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Establishing the proper process, which you know, has been passed down to the last five centuries and we, we practice today. So it was a very important event, if only just because of that, the standard was set. Of course, you know, these um, deviations continued even down to the present day, but um, for the most part, everyone knows the real doctrine of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, of course, that doctrine is being spread throughout the world by the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And it's established forever. As Prabhupada said, his books will be the gospel <coughs> for the next 10,000 years. So no chance to deviate. <laughs> so by the day of the actual celebration of Mahaprabhu's appearance, it's described hundreds of thousands of devotees had arrived from Vrindavan, Orissa, Bengal, and not only there, they also came from other parts of India, because bear in mind, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had traveled through, through South, South India in particular, and delivered many, um, many people. All, an all India event. <laughs> so, it was scheduled to be a three-day festival. And it began on the first morning with Naratam unveiling the five um, Krishna deities and the golden Goranga deity. And when he um, unveiled these beautiful forms of Krishna and Goranga, the devotees just stood there mesmerized. You know, there was a big kirtan going on chanting, you know, dancing, you know, thousands and thousands. But when the deities opened up, people were so mesmerized, you could hear a pin drop. Devotees just basking in the, in the aura of, of these beautiful uh, Archimurtis of Krishna and Mahaprabhu. And then Bhakti Ratnakara says that Srinivasacharya announced the names of the five Krishna deities. Balabhikanta, Sri Krishna, Braj Mohan, Radha Kanta, and Radha Raman. Then he presided over the Abhishek ceremony. Very um, elaborate ceremony, but he began the installation by first bowing down to all the prominent Vaishnavas present beginning with John of Amata, and asking their permission to perform the Abhishek, and as you know, ask the lords to appear in the deity. And then he began all the elaborate um, rituals, very elaborate ceremony, as was outlined in Hari Bhakti Vilas. It took many hours to complete, but in the minds of the devotees, it went by in, in, an, in an instant. <laughs> And then when all was done, 
Srinivasacharya placed the deities um, on, on, a, in a, on a beautiful marble altar. They constructed a temple, of course, I mentioned. So the deities were um, placed on a beautiful marble altar. Then the curtain was closed as the pujaris dressed the deities for the first time in, in new clothes. And they were given their first um, offering of foodstuffs. And Bhakti Matnakara states that during that time, Naratam Dashtakur, who's a poet, <laughs> a transcendental poet, and his heart is imbued with pure love for Goranga, for Gornitai, for Radha and Krishna, he took those names that Srinivasacharya had given each particular deity and he composed a very beautiful verse glorifying the um, those deities with their names. It's a verse which is ingrained in the heart of many Gaudiya Vaishnavas because Naratam is our hero. He, um, on the order of his guru, Lokanath Goswami, had those deities carved and they're they were there at the Keturi festival and you know they <laughs> they're so dear to Gaudiya Vaishnavas so this this is a very important verse very dear to to all devotees Goranga Balabhikanta Shri Krishna Braj Mohan Radharaman He Radhe Radhakanta Namostute <laughs> I thought if I ever got a tattoo which I don't <laughs> I'm not in favor of tattoos, but um, our tattoos are Vaishnav Tilak every morning. <laughs> but if I ever got one, I would. That's the verse I would have. Oh. Goranga Balabhikanta, Shri Krishna Braj Mohan, Radharaman He Radhe, Radha Kanta Namostute. Goranga Balabhikanta, Shri Krishna Braj Mohan, Radharaman He Radhe. Bada Kanta Namostute. Goranga Balavi Kanta. Shri Krishna Braj Mohan. Radharaman. He Radhe. Radha Kanta Namostute. Thank you, Naratam Dashtakur. <laughs> so everyone waited in front of the altar. Of course, we can imagine that big um, facility that had been built for the installation and for the worship of the deity that day. It was very big, but there were so many other <laughs> thousands and thousands of devotees outside. <laughs> Everyone was waiting for the kirtan to op or the curtain to open. And when Srinivastakur finally opened that curtain, it's written that millions of flowers showered down from the planets of the demigods. And this is nothing, you know, just some poetic description or some exaggeration. No, this is Shastra. Millions of flowers showered down from the heavenly planets. Wow. At the same time, the sweet scent of the transcendental forms of all those deities cascaded like a wave over all the devotees present and inunda inundated the entire town of Keturi. <laughs> the sweet scent emanating from the deities, from the transcendental forms, cascaded like a wave over all the devotees present, thousands and thousands of devotees, that, that beautiful sweet scent of the, of, of the Lord. And then it went on to inundate the entire town of Keturi. <laughs> And the shining effulgence from the bodies of the deities momentary, momentarily uh, caused the devotees to cover their eyes because it was so brilliant. <laughs> and Srinivas himself, who was preparing to start the arti, when he saw the deities so nicely dressed and, and sumptuously fed and happy, he's a pajari. He fell to the ground unconscious. And when he came to, he performed the um, artik with trembling hands. Some accounts say that um, Naratam Dashtakur performed the first artik. Sometimes you get different um, descriptions of the pastime. 
either or. The hand, hands were trembling as they were worshiping the deity. And um, I think it was Srinivas because um, it's, it's definitely described in Bhakti Ratnakar, something really amazing. As the Arctic was starting, as Srinivas Acharya was offering that Arctic, Janavamata looked at Naratam Dash Thakur, who, surrounded by expert musicians, appeared like the moon, surrounded by innumerable stars. And with a fixed gaze, she infused Naratam with spiritual powers beyond the comprehension of common men to begin the kirtan. <laughs> she infused him with spiritual powers beyond the comprehension of common people to begin the kirtan. Now standing there with Naratam Das Thakur um, were Sri Guranga Das, Sri Gokul Das, Sri Balaba Das, and Devi Das. They were the Madanga players and the Kartal players. And then Naratam began to lead Kirtan in a distinct style that he had developed over time. It, it, it came to be known as the Grahan Hati form of Kirtan. Grahan Hati form of Kirtan. It was a very, very begins as a very mellow Kirtan, and the, the melodies themselves were very rich, it's described, in emotional content. And scholars, <coughs> they say that this particular style of kirtan, Naratam Dashtakur, it employed the most um, sophisticated rhythms, tala, the most uh, melodic formats, raga, gestures of emotional, uh, very special gestures of emotional expression, abhinaya, as well as uh, develop dance techniques, natyam. The four essential elements of, of Naratam style of kirtan. And Bhakti Ratnakara says, as, as Naratam began singing, Narada Muni and hundreds and thousands of other sages came in disguise to attend that kirtan. And as Naratam began to sing, it, 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 there's many descriptions, not only, of course, the purity and the purpose of his kirtan, to please Gauranga, to please Radha and Krishna, but his voice was angelic. Well, beyond angelic, it was imbued with the devotion of um, the Brajabhasis in Goloka Vrindavan. As he began to sing from the very first note, everyone's heart began to melt in ecstasy. At everywhere you could see people crying and falling unconscious. And I read even nearby animals, birds, snakes, and other creatures became mesmerized by the kirtan and stood still. And Bhakti Ratnakara says, quote, <clears throat> as the ocean of Sankirtan overflowed its banks, people forgot their individual existence and became bathed in tears. Naratam, he knew the art of kirtan, which is essentially to please the Lord. When we're engaged in kirtan, we're doing this as a service, we're doing this as a, as a, a way to, 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 to glorify our beloved lordships. We're chanting for them, we're chanting in glorification of them. He understood that very well. And he understood that if the Lord is happy, then the devotees will be happy. And that's why you see devotees always dancing in kirtan, because Krishna is being glorified, especially in this age, through the proper means. Yagya vai Vishnu means to, to, the yagya is meant to please Vishnu, the yagya is meant to please Krishna. So in this age, it's very simple to please the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <laughs> of course, the quality of that chanting has to be there, but that will come with purification. So Naratam knew this, and he, he, he actually writes in, in Prem Bhakti uh, Chandrika, he writes um, how you can please Radha and Krishna. 
Quote, O brother, if you chant the name of Krishna, Radhika, being pleased with you, will bless you in many ways. And if you chant the name of Radha, Krishna will be pleased to fulfill your innermost desires. Bring Bhakti Chandrika. O brother, if you chant the name of Krishna, Radhika, being pleased with you, will bless you in many ways. And if you chant the name of Radha, Krishna will be pleased to fulfill your innermost desires. So there's the secret to everything. Chant the holy names of the Lord. And as Naratam and the other singers were chanting, it, it's mentioned that they were absorbed in thoughts of Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Advaita Charya. Uh, how's it said? Dedicating themselves to the mercy of those uh, lords. And as a result, it's mentioned that the singers became very emotional, transcendental emotional, emotionally, uh, the emotional, uh, transcendental emotions sprung from their hearts. And that increased the ecstasy of the audience. <laughs> and um, the first to cry as Naratam, actually on the second or third note as Naratam was singing, Janavamata burst out in tears. And devotees like Sri Achyutananda, Sripati, Sri Nidhi, others, they just lost control of their emotions. And they, it's mentioned they shivered in ecstasy. And then as, as Naratam Das Thakur, now this is going on for some time. <laughs> There's lots of descriptions. I'm just sharing something with you. But as Naratam, after a few hours, as Kirtan's going on and, you know, everyone's just absorbed in the mood. It's, it's infectious. The transcendental ecstasy is infectious. And as Naratam's kirtan reached a crescendo, a most miraculous thing happened that was documented by all the biographers of that period. Suddenly, Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Mahaprabhu, and his associates, all of whom had left the mortal world, or most of them, more than 50 years earlier, they all appeared at that moment and started singing and dancing amongst all the devotees. Now it's hard to fathom that, it's hard to comprehend that. <laughs> you know, 50 years after the departure, and, and just again, how much separation, the devo even devotees who had not met Mahaprabhu, they were feeling so much uh, separation by associating with those, those devotees who had the Lord's association were feeling separation. <laughs> you know, it was so intense that just for all practical purposes, the Sankirtan movement had come to a, a standstill. And there's the same Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's Nitai, Advaita, Gadada, or Srivas. Advaita Charya. They're dancing. And the assembled devotees were stunned to see this miraculous appearance of the Lord. It said that Lord Chaitanya's incredible dancing, quote, showered transcendental love throughout the whole world. Well, Lord Nityananda's dancing caused the entire universe to tremble in ecstasy. <laughs> and now you had hundreds of thousands of people participating in that kirtan. Actually, Bhakti Ratnakara gives a long list of those who were dancing and chanting, along with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, including the names of devotees who'd, who'd left the world but were now in that kirtan. Everyone was mixed up all together in one transcendental family. I'll recite the names because just to hear the names of these devotees, because they're so connected to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so immersed in Krishna Bhakti, just to hear their names is a form of purification. There was Mukundadatta, Shriyacharya Purandara, Vasudev Datta, Suklambara Brahmachari, Shriman Pandit, Yadunandana, Sri Mukundadatta, Sri Madhusudhana, Srinath, Mahesh, Sridhar, Shankara, Jagadish, Sri Yadunandana, 
Kashi Swara, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Rupa Goswami, Shanatan Goswami, Sri Nakula Brahmachari, Dananjaya, Vipra Vaninath, Siki Mahiti, Kanai, Surya Das, Srinasringa, Ridai Chaitanya, Shamananda Prabhu, Srinivasacharya, Srila Naratam Das Lakur, <laughs> and countless others. <sighs> Bhakti Ratnakara goes on to say, quote, Who can describe the incomparable happiness of the devotees when in the midst of the kirtan, the munificent Sri Chaitanya and his associates descended for the pleasure of his devotees? Like a flash of lightning in the middle of a mass of beautiful clouds, Sri Chaitanya himself appeared within the multitude of his followers, charming the universe by their appearance. Their presence was beyond comprehension of even Lord Brahma and all the demigods." Unquote. Wow. In the midst of the kirtan, the Bhakti Ratnakara continues, in the midst of the kirtan, they gracefully danced in time with the increasing beat of the musical instruments. Who can imagine the heightened bhav as Janava saw her departed husband, Lord Nityananda, in the midst of the kirtan? Who can imagine the feeling of Advaitacharya's sons when they saw their father singing and dancing as if he were a young man? Many devotees, after experiencing Vipralamba bhav, intense separation for so long, were now experiencing the intense bliss, intense bliss of sambhog or divine union. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> so this historical kirtan, it lasted many hours, actually deep into the night. It was going on, you know, not only do we were seeing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but they were hearing them chant and watching them dance and coming close to them. And the waves were just, of ecstasy were just permeating everything. All of a sudden, Mahaprabhu disappeared, along with those associates who had come with him from the spiritual world. They disappeared, leaving the devotees in utter despair. Bhakti Ratnakara describes <coughs> the pitiable scene. Quote, One person cried out of desperation for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, while another searched frantically where is Lord Nityananda at Advaita Acharya? Another person prayed fervently for the sight of Gadadhar Pandit, while someone else cried piteously in separation from Haridash Thakur and Vakishvara Pandit. One person was seen running here and there calling out the names, Srivas Thakur, Marari Gupta, where are you? And Bhakti Ratna Kara concludes its description of the kirtan by saying, quote, Having abandoned all hope, everyone was rolling on the ground, crying out loudly because they would never see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or his associates again. Tears flowed so profusely that the entire ground became muddy. Even atheists, who had come to make fun of the devotees during Kirtan, began to cry tears in separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. These atheists lift their hands high into the air and they called out, Ha Gauranga, Ha Gauranga, Ha Gauranga. Please protect us from our sins and miseries. Make us into your devotees. <laughs> Hare Krishna, unquote. So while recovering from this most historic occasion, people just sat like bedazzled and they began discussing the kirtan, the foremost thing on their mind forever. One person, he is quoted, he, one person appreciated the way that Naratam expressed the inner meaning of the holy names. Another person appreciated the overall masterful presentation of, of the kirtan by expert kirtaneers who were singing with pure devotion. Another person said that there was no reason to believe that, um, that the Lord 
He was, yes, he was personally present and he was relishing. We saw it with our own eyes. It's believable. <laughs> and the fourth person said that uh, the Gandharvas and Svargaloka must be ashamed now of their singing. <laughs> then very quickly, very quickly, Jonathan Mata, you know, re- got the devotees moving again. They're just lying on the ground unconscious and lamenting again. So Janava Mata, she, she ordered Srinivasacharya to begin uh, a festival of holy, the festival of, of throwing colors. So Srinivas, he brought uh, different colored powders. He put them in various containers and then I read it so interesting. He mixed them with different perfumes. I never heard of a holy like that. If you read carefully the Shastras, you come across so many precious jewels. <laughs> he brought the different colored power, powders, you know, like tons of it, I guess you could say, mixed them into, uh, put them into various containers, and then mixed them, mixed the colors with perfume, a different perfume for every color. You know, this holy festival has become popular all over the world, not how it's supposed to be done, but you know, not like it was originally done by um, Rod and Krishna and the gopis. There was a particular mood there. <laughs> and um, not as it was done you know, with Mahaprabhu and his followers, or the second generation. But um, now we, in ISKCON we're also having these festivals of, of colors. Um, my very dear godbrother, Kalasanvara Prabhu, he has an annual festival at, um, at his farm, Nuvarshana, in, in Auckland, New Zealand. And thousands of people come. He just did it a few weeks ago. I read 14,000 people came and participated in that festival. It's very, and the police came, and they're very happy to be there. They cu- get covered with all the, the colors, and it's a very festival, joyful moon. All the while, there's a big kirtan going on, prasadams distributed like this. So it's a nice addition to the Krishna conscious movement, I think, in the last decade it came in. And it's authorized, because here we're reading in Bhakti Ratnakara. The difference is, Srinivastacharya mixed in the perfume. So those of you who organize a holy festival as part of a devotee festival, or, or eventually, <laughs> hopefully when we get back in action in the public, put some perfume in each, a different perfume in each of the different colors. That'll make our holy festivals especially nice. So then he gave all these um, colors to John of Amata, or a portion of each of the different um, containers of, of um, colors. He gave them to uh, individually to John of Amata, who offered them all to the newly installed deity of Lord Chaitanya. So there you go. It is, a, it, it's authoritative to, before you do the festival, you can offer the colors to your deities. And then she took great pleasure in putting those colors on the deity of Lord Chaitanya. That's also allowed to be done. You can also put them on your deities. And then the devotees at that Keturi festival, they took great pleasure in throwing these colors on each other. Bhakti Ratnakara says <clears throat> that all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis appeared very beautiful as they smeared uh, scented uh, colored powder on each other. And their bodies became very bright and rich with colors as they, play, they played holy. And as they were doing this holy, sun devotees were singing a song about the pastime of Radha and Krishna playing holy together. All our activities are always accompanied by kirtan. And Bhakti Ratnakara concludes recounting this pastime by saying, quote, <clears throat> By the will of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the throwing of colors was a very enjoyable festival in which demigods came and mixed with the devotees and took part in the festivities. Hare Krishna. So the next morning, um, well, I think the next day there was another, well, 
kirtans, katas, association, etc. And um, the final morning, uh, Janava Mata and a team of experienced cooks, trained by her, prepared breakfast for all the devotees. Mother Janava, the senior most devotee, she's preparing the prasad for these thousands of devotees. Then with a few assistants, she personally fed the devotees with her own hands. And only when everyone else had completed their meal did Janava Mata sit down and enjoy prasadam. This was her humility. So that evening, everyone took their last darshan of, of that festival, of the newly installed deities. And I was reading, everyone who departed that evening left with tears um, cascading down their faces. They left for their respective homes. Everyone was crying when they were leaving. Hare Krishna, the Keturi festival. <laughs> for a more detailed description, you can read uh, Bhakti Ratnakara. Again and again and again and again. We we're learning things, how to perform our, festival, our festivals, because, of course, festivals are a very intricate part of our International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Why? Because they're an integral part of the culture in Goloka Vrindavan. Where every word is a song, every step is a dance, where there's a festival every day, and the flute is the constant companion, according to Brahma Samhita. So there's a festival every day in the spiritual world. When Mahaprabhu came, there were many festive activities, festivals going on. We can see his second generation devotees had festivals. Prabhupada came, his first little festival you could say was the Sunday feast at 26 Second Avenue which grew then our dear Jayananda Prabhu took Prabhupada's instruction to heart and made the Ratha Yatra festival famous all over America and then it spread around the world and we have our cultural festivals the festivities are these type of festivals are an easy way for people to enter into the wonderful world of Krishna consciousness because they're fun on the transcendental platform. And we should make them first class, everything first class, uh, when people come into our, their artistic performances should be on the level of Broadway productions. <laughs> but Krishna conscious, you know, Ramayan, Mahabharat, different plays like that. Our kirtan should be done uh, with expert musicians, um, as Madhava Prabhu was always saying, from the heart, chant from the heart, the pure heart, by dint of our devotional activities. Delicious first-class prasadam should be there. Different booths with different types of entertainment where people can come. And when they experience the joyful life of Krishna consciousness, they will purchase a book of Sridhar Prabhupada as they leave the festival. And then their spiritual uh, journey has begun in earnest. So it's so nice to, to hear about how um, our hero, Naratam Das Thakur, put on that big Keturi festival. We've got some ideas from that. So there's several other important pastimes of uh, Srila Naratam Das Thakur, which we'll um, go through in our next lecture, part three. Wow, part three. <laughs> but we'll conclude today's um, humble presentation uh, with a very sweet verse from again Bhakti Ratnakara. Because so much is so many of the glories of Naratam Das Thakur discussed there. A very beautiful verse glorifying our hero, the great Rasik devotee, the great preacher, Sri Naratam Das Thakur. It's from the fourteenth wave of Bhakti Ratnakara. They're not called chapters, they're called waves. <laughs> so here it is. <coughs> Speaking about Naratam. How charming and sweet were his ways. He resided in Keturi Gram. He served the deities of Shingor, Radharaman, Balabhikanta, Radhakanta, Radha Krishna, and Brajamohan, who were all abodes of deep spiritual nectar. These six deities enjoyed pastimes before Naratam's eyes, 
Who will not be overcome by gazing at the splendor and handsomeness of these deities? Naraton was always happy uh, in the association of his dear friend Ramchandra Kaviraj. He always floated in nectar waves of ecstatic spiritual love. <coughs> Shila Nartam Dastakur Ki, Shamananda Pandit Ki, Srinivasacharya Ki, Ramchanda Kaviraj Ki, Jadavamata Ki, the Keturi Festival Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yagya Ki, Goranga Balabhikanta, Shri Krishna Braj Mohan, Radha Raman, He Radhe, Radha Kanta Namostute, Shishi Gornitai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram ki, Shishi Radha Shama Sundar ki, Vrindavan Ishwari Shimati Vararani ki, Shri ki. Spread the festival of Krishna consciousness all over the world to every town and village of ki. <laughs> Take everybody back home, back to Godhead, to Goloka Vrindavan Dhamma ki, Shishi Gauri Thai ki, Jai Jai Sisi Radhe Sham. Goranga, Balabhikanta, Shri Krishna, Braj Mohan, Radha Raman, He Radhe, Radha Kanta, Namostute, Goranga, Balabhikanta, Shri Krishna, Braj Mohan, Radha Raman, He Radhe, Radha Kanta, Namostute, Goranga, Balabhikanta, Shri Krishna, Braj Mohan, Radha Raman, He Radhe, Radha Kanta, Namostute, Hare Krishna. <coughs>